in talking about Earth's atmosphere, we've been talking about the changes in the Earth's atmosphere, and more recently, human-impacted changes in the atmosphere. Well, remember, we talk, when we were talking about the atmosphere, we were talking about the stratosphere as well. The stratosphere is a layer of the atmosphere well above the surface of the Earth in which sunlight um, produces ozone. This ozone then absorbs ultraviolet light from the sun, and that heats this layer of the atmosphere. That means very little UV makes it to the ground. So that's what's happening in the stratosphere. This is absolutely essential to life as we know it on Earth, that the ozone is in the stratosphere. Okay. Now, the problem is that there are certain chemicals that break down the ozone in the stratosphere. And uh, most notorious of these ozone-depleting chemicals uh, was a class called chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs for short, because saying chlorofluorocarbon is kind of hard. And so uh, the CFCs, or the chlorofluorocarbons, uh, were, were produced industrially all over the world. Uh, you're probably familiar with uh, the most famous CFC was called Freon. And this was used uh, industrially because it has a really nice property. And that is its boiling point. Remember, gases and liquids, you know, they boil. Uh, liquids boil into gas. The boiling point was actually pretty cool. It was, uh, there was different kinds of Freon, but the, the boiling point was a little bit below freezing or a little bit above freezing. And so it was also very easy for a compressor to squeeze it. When you squeeze a gas, that changes the temperature it boils at. You can actually squeeze it, and now the boiling point, you can actually squeeze it back into a liquid, and now it's a warm liquid. And then you just take the heat away and let it boil, and it becomes cold. So this became used as a refrigerant. Uh, some of the first refrigerants you know, were actually other chemicals. For example, ammonia does the same kind of thing. You can squeeze ammonia in liquid, and then when it evaporates, it, it, it cools off. Uh, propane is also the same way. It's pretty easy to squeeze into a liquid, and then when it evaporates, it cools off. So if you've got a, a propane grill, you can just feel the tank, and where it's cold is where the propane is still liquid and evaporating. And so... Uh, uh, so you can actually cool things with pro evaporating propane or evaporating ammonia. Now, the problem is propane is flammable. And so if you cool things by circulating propane, you have a risk that if, it, if it, you have a leak, you have a flammable leak. You've got a flammable gas leaking out. Uh, there are actually some, some um, RVs, for example, that can cool with the propane, but you actually have this danger here of a flammable leak. Um, ammonia was used because it's not flammable, but ammonia is also toxic, so a leak could kill you. And so uh, uh, company, American com chemical company, uh, came up with this uh, new chemical it was a combination of chlorine and fluorine and carbons and oxygen and so forth. And it was a chlorofluorocarbon, uh, or CFC, and it, it had this property that it would, would also be easy to squeeze into a liquid form, evaporate. Now, the problem is, or the good thing about it was, it was also completely non-toxic, that um, if it leaked, it didn't hurt you. And so uh, it was very, very rare you get a chemical that's this non-toxic. And so it became the dominant way of cooling houses and buildings and in refrigerators and air conditioners and cars and so forth. So this, 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 this chemical uh, became fantastic. The problem is that chlorofluorocarbons, when they got loosened to the atmosphere, would float up and they would then attack the ozone. And if you attack the ozone, then you have less ozone in the stratosphere and more ultraviolet light making it to the ground. Okay. 
So the ozone is destroyed here in this fashion, and and so uh, it, this is what we call ozone depletion. And so the chlorofluorocarbons uh, were eventually banned, pretty much. And so uh, some of the stuff that they they you know they they call freon today is not you know actually freon; it's really just in a refrigerant. And so they replaced chlorofluorocarbons. Uh, they actually made the original freon uh, uh, against the law to manufacture. And so um, people kind of started running out of it. The price went skyrocketing. And they came up with a different chemical used in air conditioners as refrigerants. And so that replaced the original freon. Replace the original freon in cars and also in refrigerators and freezers and so forth. Okay, so this this was a a a, 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 a environmentalist hailed this as a major step forward because the ozone had been depleted. Atmospheric circulation typically brought ozone uh, depleting chemicals and congregated them at the north and south pole, especially the south pole. And so you ended up with much less ozone over the South Pole, which means more UV light came through. Now, that actually uh, uh, has an impact on penguins and things that live there. But it also, this excess UV light stretched all the way up into Australia, where uh, they started realizing that there was a substantial increase in skin cancer among people, uh, that, that in fact, uh, certain, certain species of animals were brought to this point of extinction by the excess UV killing them off. And uh, ultraviolet uh, light was actually making it through the ozone all over the world, in fact. And so the, 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 it ended up with, uh, nation, you, know, you know, worldwide, a gradual increase in skin cancer from uh, solar exposure uh, due to excess UV. Now, this but the uh, banning of CFCs, now it takes a long time for all this to regenerate. It does naturally regenerate, uh, but it does take a long time. So this was actually uh, portrayed as a major environmental um, win. There was a problem, though. The chemicals that they used to replace the original CFCs turned out to be massive greenhouse gases, uh, somewhere that around three to 400 times bigger impact than carbon dioxide. And so um, while you had a lot of fossil fuels being burned, producing a huge amount of carbon dioxide, you also had air conditioners and refrigerators and things leaking refrigerant producing greenhouse gases that were even more powerful uh, greenhouse gases. And so all of a sudden we realized that we'd fixed one problem and made another problem even worse. And so in recent years, they've also made those refrigerants uh, illegal to produce. And so now there's a new kind that's being produced. So in other words, if you have to have your air conditioner fixed now, then, you know, if you use the old kind of refrigerant, it's going to be massive expensive to do it because they don't make that anymore. And you, we're just like, you know, using up stockpiles that existed beforehand. Uh, it'd be massive expensive to change out the, the uh, um system to a new system, but, you know, it would also be vastly expensive to fix it. Now, if you have a new system that's leaking, then it's pretty easy to fix because you're using the new type of refrigerant. Uh, the only problem is the new type of refrigerant is not as health-wise safe as the old types. So the type that's now not a greenhouse gas uh, also is a CFC, but it's a CFC that breaks down really easily before it makes it to the stratosphere. Uh, but it also turns out to be toxic. So that means you really don't want to breathe the gases that might escape from a leaking AC or refrigerator. Uh, they're also slightly flammable. So, uh, so we have, uh, they're not as toxic or flammable as, uh, for example, ammonia or propane, but they're not as, as safe as the, the gases that were before. 
So again, we, this turns out to be kind of a complicated sort of situation. Now, frequently people that don't know any better conflate uh, greenhouse gas and ozone depletion. These are actually two entirely separate ways that we mess with our atmosphere. And so uh, they have entirely separate fixes here. We've actually been much more successful at fixing ozone depletion than we have uh, with uh, greenhouse uh, problems.